topic is jasper jumper which is a type of a myofunctional appliance so what is myofunctional appliance so myofunctional appliances they are the variety of intraoral appliances that depend upon the natural forces of the orofacial musculature for their action so myofunctional myo is nothing but it is the musculature so they depend on the orofacial musculature for their action now we know like we have those removal fixed then myofunctional and orthopedic appliances so these are all the treatment modalities in orthodontics so this removal and the fix they are type of a mechanical appliance on which you know you have those active components so you have active components in fixed and removal and because of this active component there are the forces which are exert on the teeth and because of that there is the tooth movement but now in this myofunctional appliances they depend on the orofacial musculature rather than the tooth this jasper jumper is a type of a myofunctional appliance so your myofunctional appliance they are of so they are broadly divided as removal and fixed so jasper jumper is a type of a fixed myofunctional appliance as it is fixed in the patient's mouth now this jasper jumper it is used in the case of class 2 Jasper jumper it is a relatively new type of appliance it is a new type of myofunctional appliance which is flexible fixed and tooth borne so it is flexible it is fixed now we have seen there are removable and fixed so jasper jumper and herbs appliance they are the fixed type of myofunctional appliance so it was introduced by j j jasper in 1980 so this jasper jumper the action of this jasper jumper it is similar to the herbs appliance but this jasper jumper they lack rigidity now this is the herbs appliance so this herbs appliance it has this tube and the plunger so plunger is nothing but it is like a rod so there's this tube which is present so inside this tube there's this rod which goes and but this herbs appliance it is rigid as they do not have any coils but in jasper jumper you have this coil and because of that it is flexible so the action of jasper jumper and herbs they are similar but the only difference is the jasper jumper they are flexible so the appliance design is so the appliance it uses a modular system which is known as jasper jumper so it can be attached to the fixed appliance that are placed on the upper and the lower teeth so this jasper jumper so this is a module so this is the whole thing that is this jasper jumper so this module it is attached to the fixed appliance so the person he has the fixed orthodontic appliances also so he have all those braces and this jasper jumper it is fixed on that so this is the jasper jumper module so jasper jumper module it is analogous to the tube and plunger of the herbs appliance but it is more flexible now as i said so it is analogous so this appliance so this and so this jasper jumper module it is analogous to this tube and plunger appliance but the only difference is they are flexible so now this jasper jumper it is constructed with the stainless steel coil that is attached at the both ends to a stainless steel cap so over here they are built of this stainless steel coil and they are attached to a stainless steel cap at the ends of it so this is how it looks so this is your stainless steel coil and they are attached at the ends with this stainless steel caps and then this coil it is covered with a polyurethane material so this module it is given an opaque polyurethane covering for the purpose of hygiene and the comfort so it is covered with this polyurethane material for the purpose of hygiene and comfort so this jasper jumper it is available in seven sizes that is from 26 mm to 38 mm in length this is the range in which the jasper jumper it is available that is 26 to 38 mm now this end cap so now we have seen so this is the first point that is your so this is the first part that is the it is made up of this stainless steel coils which is which is attached to this caps now this caps they are attached to the fixed appliance on your maxillary and the mandibular arch so now your maxillary and mandibular arch they have this appliance fixed appliance which is already there so now you are going to fix so this is your jasper jumper module so you are going to fix this module on this fixed appliance the module it is attached posteriorly on the maxillary arch and anteriorly over here this is your canine so anteriorly they are attached to the mandibular arch and posteriorly they are attached to the maxillary arch so now in maxilla the fourth module it is attached posteriorly to the maxillary arch by a ball pin that passes through the face bore tube of the maxillary first molar now this is your maxillary first molar so your maxillary first molar it has this bands 
So now over here, your molars, they have this band and normally you have the brackets on your teeth and then the arch wire is passing through it. So this is your fixed appliance. So in, on your maxillary and the mandibular molars, you have this bands and on this band, you have a tube. So this is known as a facebow tube. And inside this facebow tube is this ball and pin which goes inside this tube. So it's like a screw which goes. So this is a facebow tube. So your, this Jasper jumper, module it is attached to this ball pin posteriorly on your maxillary arch so this is how it it is attached on your maxillary arch and now in the mandibular it is attached or it is anchored to the lower arch wire distal to the mandibular canine by a small bayonet bend so there is a small bayonet bend which is given and there is this lexin ball which is present so this jasper jumper module it is anchored on the arch wire but it is distal to the canine. So it is anteriorly for your mandible and it is posteriorly for your maxilla. But they are fixed to your fixed appliance. So the care is to be taken that the arch wire, they are thick enough so that they don't get fractured. So now you have used this arch wires. So this arch wire, it should be thick enough so that now when you're attaching this module onto this arch wire, so it shouldn't fracture. For jumper, it is indicated in skeletal class to malocclusion with maxillary excess and mandibular deficiency. So where there is maxillary excess and mandibular deficiency, that is your class 2 in that you are using this jasper jumper. Now the next part is the mechanism of action, how this jasper jumper module it works. So the force module, it is selected by measuring the distance. So for the first what you are going to do is you are going to measure the distance that is mesial to your facebow tube till the distal of your canine or distal of your lexin ball. So now you have seen this is a lexin ball which is present on this mandibular arch, over this mandibular arch. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure this distance. So this is distal to your canine. So your canine, your only, this is a lexin ball which is present. So from here till the mesial of your facebow tube, you're going to measure the distance. So for example, this distance is 20 mm. Then what you're going to do is to this length, 12 mm, it is added to get the required length of the force module. So now the patient, now first thing, the patient is asked to bite in the centric occlusion. And after that, you're going to measure this distance. And what you're going to do is now you're going to add whatever the distance was, then you're going to add 12 mm to that distance. And then you're going to prepare that force module of this Jasper jumper. When the patient, he closes into the occlusion, the forces module being longer. Now the forces module, they are longer than the normal wall. So for the normal one, so when the patient, he is biting in the occlusion, so it was 20 mm. But now you have constructed the Jasper jumper with a module, force module, which is longer than this normal distance. So because of that, there is this curve which is created. Because of that, there is this curve which is created, which is leading to the mesial or the advancing forces on the mandibular arch and a distal force on the maxillary arch. So because of this, so because of this curve which is created and the forces which are longer than the normal, so because of that there is forces which will cause distal movement of the maxilla and the mesial movement of the mandibular. So this, so this was the case. So now you have attached your Jasper jumper that is maxillary posterior anteriorly or mandible. So like this, so because of the forces module, they are excessive or they are longer than the normal one. Because of that, the maxilla, it will get a distal movement and your mandible, it will get a mesial movement and the maxilla it is getting distal movement. And because of this, it gets into a proper position. So this is how it works. Now, what are the effects of the Jasper jumper? So according to Rankin, Parker and Blackwood, the Jasper jumper, it brings both dental and skeletal changes to a ratio of 40 is to 60. So the skeletal changes are 40% and the dental alveolar changes, they are 60%. So according to this three authors, they bring the changes in both. That is your skeletal and your dental alveolar. So this is the ratio that you have to remember for Jasper jumper. So this is 40 is to 60. 40 is for your skeletal changes and 60 is for dental alveolar changes. So the skeletal effects, they include, what they do, the skeletal effects are, so it holds and displaces the maxilla distally. So we have seen in the mechanism of action. So because of the longer forces module, the maxilla, it moves distally. The next is, there is a small shift of the point A 
distally. The next is there is a clockwise rotation of the mandible and there is a condyle movements forward. So your condyle it moves forward that is mesially. So these are the skeletal effects. The dental effects are there is posterior tipping and the intrusion of your upper molars. The next is there is backward tipping of the maxillary incisors. So the incisors they move backward. So there is this backward tipping of them. The next is the anterior translation and tipping of the mandibular teeth. So your mandibular teeth they are anteriorly translated. So they are translated in the mesial direction in front and next is the intrusion of the mandibular incisors so the mandibular incisors they are intruded so these are the dental changes which you'll see jasper it states that class 2 correction with this appliance is brought about by so there are this changes it is brought about by so there is this 20 percent maxillary skeletal restraining so the maxillary skeletal restraining is by 20 percent the next is 20 percent is backward dento alveolar movement of maxilla so the dento alveolar movement of the maxilla is by 20 percent then 20 percent is the forward dento alveolar movement of the mandible so your mandible it is moved dento alveolarly forward by 20 percent then 20 percent it is by condylar stimulation so your condylar they move forward so the condylar they are stimulated by 20 percent and the last 20 percent is by the downward and the forward remodeling of the glenoid fossa. As per they state that the class 2 correction with this appliance is brought about by all these changes. Now what are the advantages of Jasper Jumper? So first is it produces continuous forces as it is a fixed appliance so the patient he cannot remove this appliance so because of that there is continuous forces which are produced. The next is it does not require patient compliance by the way of timely wear as it is a fixed appliance so it does not require patient's compliance. The next is it allows greater degree of mandibular freedom than the herbs appliance. Herbs appliance, it is a rigid type of appliance. So, be, so when you're comparing Jasper Jumper as compared to your herbs appliance, so it allows greater degree of mandibular movement as it is flexible. And the last is the oral hygiene. It is easier to maintain because of this covering. Because of this polyutherin covering, it becomes easier to clean or to maintain that oral hygiene of the patient. So this is all about Jasper Jumper. This is the Tural Jumper which is for class 3. The design is same as of Jasper Jumper. The only difference is the posterior is on the mandible and anteriorly it is on the maxilla.